Hello there. Don't have a good day. Have a great day. Talk to me, Goose. Precious. You steal the Declaration of Independence. Fly, sir. Sail, sir. World. I could do this all day. Are you watching closely? Welcome, everybody, to the One Eyed Film Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Mossberg. Merry Christmas. Today, we are releasing one of two episodes for you. This one was recorded back when we recorded The Prestige, our first episode ever. And it's just a discussion that Josh and Will and I started talking about, and I figured I'd hit record and see where the conversation led us. We didn't plan this out. This is just the type of conversations we have, and we wanted to let you guys in on it, just kind of our raw thoughts without any notes or anything. Let us know what you guys think about the style of episode. Maybe we'll do a few more of them in the future. Without further ado, let's get right into the roundtable discussion on video games. Games. But from your perspective, they're so much more interactive. There, I don't think the interactive is as much for me right now. Really? Then what is it? Long story format because it's so I long think, and you're so engaged within it? I think in movies, being able to, to tell story through conversation, it's so limited. You're trying so hard to get content in within two hours, mm-hmm. whereas video games... You've got as much time as you need to build re- build relationships. For example, God of War. You're going through this whole journey while you're fighting enemies or while you're just climbing walls. You have ability to have natural interactions between Atreus and Kratos mm-hmm. that is natural. You don't have forced conversation that you sometimes have in movies that is trying to give the the person watching it as much information as they can within this time frame. Uh, unless you have, what what's this next Avatar going to be like, what, five much. hours? Weren't they talking about that? Yeah, it's going to be really long, just yeah. because Cameron has said, uh, people will binge an entire season. I don't want to hear them complaining about sitting for a while in the movie theater. Yeah, I, if I have to pee, so what? <laughs> I'll do it while they're trying to flex their CGI budget. <laughs> we'll have to see. I, well, in a, in a, but I'll have to see if we can. A game that did this so well is The Last of Us. You uh-huh. see... Ellie and Joel slowly building a relationship by going through the whole country together in mm-hmm. their natural interactions. Yeah. After each encounter, uh, you'll come across a group of clickers or you'll come across some raiders, and you see how they act to normal situations or whatever it may be. You, you can see how they just talk. Movies, you only get a snippet. You have so many clips that you try to put together to give the audience member as much information as possible. You don't mm-hmm. have what's just a normal day to day activity that builds the relationship. You can only give like the super sentimental scenarios. Like in The Last of Us, there's a, there's a scene where Ellie and Joel are having a moment with these drafts that show up at a big building. You can't have that scene and have it have as much sincerity if you didn't go through the whole first half of the game together. Mm-hmm. You, it's so much more sentimental because you understand what Joel went through, you understand what Ellie went through, and you see how they slowly change their interactions to each other that isn't rushed in what a movie would do. A movie, you have an hour to have character development. In a game, you have 30 plus hours to do it. You have slow, slight changes in just natural dialogue, and you also have change in movement, even some animations, whatever it may be. I mean, like God of War, the last one, you see Atreus slowly becoming much more comfortable in battle. You can't have that kind of sort of visualization visualization in a movie because you just have a five-minute training montage. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have Hercules, yeah. yeah, for example. You can't build characters... Like you can in video games. Yeah. And even p- people like Aristotle, Socrates, said that some of the biggest parts of a good story are character and plot. Nowadays, I feel like we focus way too much on CGI and how well it looks, where we throw away the plot. Video games bring it back to character. They bring it back to plot. Yes, some video games look phenomenal. And with breakthroughs in technology, you have God of War that looks just... <laughs> Poop good. <laughs> so good. But it's it's the characters that you come across, the understanding what they're going through, that makes the game so good because you put yourself in each of their shoes and you can't say you do any different. One yeah. of the biggest themes, uh, 
spoilers for The Last of Us, <laughs> but one of the biggest themes there is Joel has a sucky life. He lost his daughter in the first 15 minutes of the game. And then you spend the whole game trying not to get attached to Ellie because you're scared that you're going to lose her because of the way you lost Sarah at the very beginning. And then you get to this Firefly station and you understand that the cure for what you've been fighting this whole time would kill who you've become attached to. You can't have that kind of slow connection and that kind of reluctance to try and get close to Ellie in an hour. Mm -hmm. You have it over 25 I think kind of what you're touching on is is this it's this the power of video games to be they're in many ways they're more gradual and informal and that helps form a different um, uh, relationship between you and the characters. I was actually talking about this with a professor of mine um, in philosophy of art and stuff like that, and it's fascinating because we were talking about video games and NPCs and how uh, in some philosophical groups npcs and characters like that actually have an identity they don't we don't uh unless you're kind of like one of those stranger folks on the internet you don't we don't consider ais to be alive but we do consider them to have a certain identity because they are essentially uh they it's formed by their reactions to the outside world which is this virtual world and even though they're lines of codes and even though ellie isn't actual a real person she's just a uh a cgi formed person that has lines of code that say do this do this do this form this certain interaction say this thing because of how video games are designed it kind of it, it that ellie becomes a, a person to you okay she has an in she has an identity this is who ellie is and you're able to see that throughout the video game and you can't quite get that as much in a two-hour movie or even a long series you can get something similar but i think it is different and it's it's the fact that you're able to uh, see this character in everyday aspects that you wouldn't normally see. Because another thing about movies is they're very meticulously designed. Oh, well, I mean, unless you're a terrible movie, but even still, it's, with like the movie that you're doing, it's very intentionally designed. Josh, you and I have talked about The Last of Us HBO series that's coming out. Oh yeah. And goodness. what pros and cons that can bring, because just as you said. Games give you so much more time to delve into a story. And yes, you could say that a series can give you more time because series could run as long as six hours or more. Yeah. Six to eight hours of story because you can have an hour episodes with 12 hour, or twelve episodes, whatever. More than a two hour or even three hour movie. Mm-hmm. So there is some plus to it being a series rather than a movie. But even so, like you said, it takes so much more to make a game and to develop that game and then you have to compress it even if it's cutting certain parts out of it to make it into a tv adaptation for what purpose yeah and yeah that i'm i'm nervous for it because the last of us is near and dear to my heart i shed my first tears that i ever did for any film or movie or video game on that game just in general, that's that's that was the first time he cried. Yeah, the first time. <laughs> Outside of the womb, nothing. Watch The Last of Us. <laughs> hey, see, I didn't know what tears were. <laughs> they were new to me. <laughs> but th- yeah, this new uh, this new The Last of Us TV series coming out. Pros, it is a TV series. They have time to do it right. They can do it right. I don't know if they're gonna. Is it out? No, it's, it's coming out soon. Should, yeah, it when should is, be coming when out is soon. it? It's coming out next year, twenty twenty three. Yep, not sure when. I'm assuming it's just going to be a random release. It just said it's the series is set to debut January fifteenth, twenty twenty three. We should binge it. We could. I should say that I I like the casting. I think, I think they did a do, good job good. in picking out cast. Yeah. Yes. Um, I but, think they can still do it right. But since I have such a high standard for The Last of Us, I. My, the bar is low for this TV series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And considering kind of the track record of a lot of recent companies a, a trying to adapt some previous work, be it a book or even a previous film franchise, that's a lot of what's happening. So there is, I think we can have a pretty healthy degree of skepticism about anything new coming out. And now something that, I, that does remind me, uh, which does give me a little bit of hope for The Last of Us, is how well The Witcher did. That I have now I haven't watched it because I watched the first, the first episode, 
saw a naked person, I'm like, yeah, this is exactly like the video game. Didn't watch a second episode. <laughs> but from friends that I have seen, no, I don't, I can't handle a TV show like The Witcher. I was able to handle it in the video game because it was different. TV show was too much for me because it was real actors, it was real stuff. Didn't want to watch it. Now that was a stumbling block for me. If you guys have any sort of stumbling blocks like that, do not play these video games. Uh, because they will test your Christian strength. <laughs> I will say that. Standards. Christian standards, yeah. The Witcher, from what I have heard from non-Christian friends, uh, the way they said the Witcher series was able to live up to the video game and ultimately the book was really well. Mm-hmm. Well done, well executed, and well acted. I do have a caveat for that. I have read the books, I have not played the video games, and I have not watched the TV series, but what I have heard is, uh, first off, Henry Cavill is, a, he's a nerd, okay? And he's, he's, <laughs> he's very, talk, yeah, he's talking very passionately about how he's very much into the books and how he wants to amplify Geralt as he's describing the books. He wants to f- fulfill that character, and I have a lot of respect for him for that. But if you haven't heard recently, he's... Um, Stepping down. Yeah, yeah. And this is allegedly, and there seems to be a lot of indications that, for a good reason for this, because he disagrees with the writers who seem to not really care for the source material. And I've heard that essentially first season was really good. Second season, I mean, either it was about the same or maybe maybe it was a little less Sequels good. Sequels are usually kind of like that. Yep, and like it kind of started to deviate from the story a little bit more. Yep, so people were kind that. of like, okay, it's fine, but we're nervous. So everyone's kind of eyeing the third season and seeing, because this is the last season he's in, and then we have the fourth season if they make it. Um, I'm, I'm hoping they quit at three. Now, something that I am also nervous for some games or anything that tries to leech off of games, uh, I don't want them to become money makers, you know? Because something that I think Marvel has fallen into. Yeah. <laughs> definitely. It's another episode sure. in the entirety. A whole other episode. But when you start to start just making money off of stuff, after Avengers Endgame, that's when I that's when I fell off the bandwagon. It was like, okay, now we're just throwing in a ton of political values. We're throwing in whatever it may be because the series is a money maker. That's what I don't want The Witcher to become. Yeah. I, I don't want that for video games, and that's what I fear for The Last of Us because of how well The Last of Us did. Broke records, did great, phenomenal, because it was good. Mm-hmm. I don't want that to become what the series is. Yeah. And that's like the great fear in just Hollywood and the entertainment industry in general, I would say, is it's a lot of it, most of it is probably driven by profits, and if a lot of times, unfortunately, especially recently, I'd say, profits have become the main uh, so important that it it comes first instead of uh, storytelling or other things as well, you know, um, different agendas and stuff like that. But a lot of things have started to come first instead of story and plot. I think we've we'll kind talk- of focused on the spectacle and stuff like that. Sorry, you can go, Seth. I think we'll talk about that in the has Marvel fallen off or has Marvel died episode that I'm sure we will record soon because it is on our minds. We were very big Marvel nerds through Phase 3. Oh, yeah. We loved going to see Endgame together, and yet it's been such a disappointment seeing how where they've gone the last three years. We'll talk about that in the future. We're really good at setting up topics. Oh, us. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're like Marvel. We're setting up topics yeah. for future episodes. Except, <laughs> except, except, except we don't make money. Oh, except we're, we, we don't, don't make, make money. money. <laughs> Guys, support us. Follow us on Spotify. Share it. With, share us with your friends. No. <laughs> Give <laughs> us money, please. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mr. Beast. <laughs> Mr. Beast. Uh, if you would sponsor it. No. Hey, Mr. Beast, um, I was in an accident. Please. Uh, I need a vehicle. <laughs> you guys said a lot there. And I think it's important stuff that you're talking about. I, I had a few notes. You were talking about NPCs. Have you watched Free Guy yet? Oh, yeah. Cause, uh, didn't we watch that at your house, right? That was a well-made We did. Movie. Yeah, that's right. I did. We did watch Free Guy. We'll do yeah. an episode on Free Guy, but Free Guy is an amazing movie yeah. about NPCs, and it's just got a bunch of video game references I love, but it's yeah. also got a great story about creating... Uh, and it was well It was well thought out. It was yeah, well it was thought out. It was researched. It was researched, yeah. but it has such a great story about a creator who's writing a love story to someone else, and it's... We'll talk about that another time. Here's a problem <laughs> that I have with that's The Last of Us being a series... <laughs> alongside all of the announcements from Disney this year of what movies are coming out with, there are zero new ideas. Yeah. They yeah. just know that something was popular, and so they're either making a reboot, a remake, or a sequel to everything. Yeah. 
the the creative well has run dry. And, and we see, we see that just so much ideas just being revamped, or even some of the newer Marvel movies. Mm-hmm. Same plot line, yeah. Different characters. There are like, there's always like something very interesting and new um, that always pops up. But I'd say, and a lot of other creators and uh, people on the internet have talked about this to a, a large degree. That it's basically we're just looking to the glories of the old past and just trying to capture that so they can make money. Uh, that's what companies are doing, at least. I think trying to cater to a simpler time is a very good business tactic. Yeah. All of us loved the feeling of getting new characters in the older Marvel days, right? Yeah. Or we loved the origin stories. They're trying to relive all of that with the same characters. Yeah. They're they're not making any new content. They're yeah. bringing back the old stuff just praying that we're still attached to them. Yeah. They need to create new attachments. They yeah. need that created creativity to come back. I mean, I have a book here. It has so many Marvel movies that Stanley has already set up for them. They have s- all the tools to just make new characters come in with just as good of intro as some of the older yeah. characters. Yeah, so Disney has announced, you know, Disenchanted, Hocus Pocus 2, which have already come out. I haven't watched them. I don't really care to. Well, But okay. they've, also, they've also announced Little Mermaid remake, Snow White remake, Indiana Jones 5, a Mufasa origin story. Those are the ones that I see and I just groan because they're, they're not creative. They're not Like new. you said, we, we desire... They think that we desire nostalgia to a sense that we want it revamped for modern era. And to a degree, that is is what we want, but it's not... What we, we, what we really want is new stories. Like what Nolan brings us and what um, just these individual directors bring us uh in their in their personal writings in their in their own directions when there's an independent film or movie it's just so well written and great i'm no longer with disney because that's just what they've been doing mm-hmm. it, it's boring yeah two things first off i actually have watched disenchanted it uh, sucks <laughs> it sucks. Really? Really? It's, really? I, thought I thought it was so cringy i hated it so much i can't wait to watch it again <laughs> <laughs> okay okay i i will say i just watched it with my sisters and i think it's fine i actually enjoyed watching it i think it's a I fine i think it's a fine sequel sorry. but i don't think it's necessary i also don't think you're as much of a critic as that's true seth and i can be that's because true. you you like to just enjoy a movie that's true i can i am a person who can just sit down like for example, I was able to sit down and enjoy the the new Star Wars movies, even though I thought, okay, this is like weird, but I can enjoy it. It's like woo zoom. I fall into that as well with both video games and movies. I really like it right away, and I, I enjoy the initial emotions that mm-hmm. it's supposed to bring, unless it's a really bad movie. But yeah, well, I I think uh, I haven't watched this Enchanted, but I think of Jurassic World Dominion when I watched it with my friend, uh, and we just cringe through the whole thing like i i knew it was yeah. a bad movie i hated it it was so much fun, but movies wasn't it? movies that are bad disguised as good like the last star wars movies i like them the first time i watched them but i wouldn't choose to watch them now just because i know that they're poorly written they're not yeah. furthering a story they're, the the sequel trilogy has so many discontinued you know plot threads and plot holes that don't lead anywhere and with the directors changing up it was a mess so Somehow like, Palpatine returns. What? Yeah. With all of these like Star Wars movies having all of these just plot holes, when you go into it, you don't think of these plot holes. It's when you step away from the movie and you're like, oh, mm-hmm. well, what, what about this? What about this? And, and you start to explain your way out of stuff happening differently. Initially, you watch a movie and it's so much better while you're in the moment. But then you step away and the magic is lost. You're no longer in the movie because it just wasn't well made i felt the same way for eternals and shang chi where i watched it thought they were great and then i read some reviews i read i watched some video essays and i realized they weren't that good yeah and honestly let's tie this into our our life lesson of the day a lot of things in life we we get into right away we're excited about them and then after we take a step back or somebody gives us an external uh visualization of what it actually is like or their perspective you realize how bad it really is and we can learn from that not to take things at face value 
again, we're watching movies with discernment, we're playing video games with discernment, and we may need a second opinion or another perspective to just center our our the way to just just center the way we consume it so that we are doing it with a level mind and not with hype of either the Star Wars fandom behind you or the way that mm-hmm. back when I watched Eternals it was still Marvel hype. All Marvel movies should be really good and really well written and then I realized we're we're slowly dying from that. The critical thinking starts to come into play once you have second opinions come in because it's yeah. so easy to fall onto a bandwagon. Bandwagon. A once penguin? A penguin. <laughs> it's so easy to fall onto a penguin. Yeah, I have don't to even I, get me started. It happens to me <laughs> every day. <laughs> it's so easy to fall onto a bane. <laughs> a penguin? A penguin? A penguin? <laughs> penguin. <laughs> oh penguin. It. It's so easy to fall onto a bandwagon when you're the only one thinking. Exactly. Yeah. As soon as you start to congregate and start to think about stuff, with other people, you rationalize what's going on. You use critical thinking skills to just understand, was this good? Was this bad? Was it well written? Was it poorly written? And that won't happen during the movie. I I don't think I've gone into a movie and been like, what's wrong with this right away? Unless you're someone like CinemaSins, <laughs> not going to happen. Yeah. For, for me, at least. Now, maybe someone who's listening to this will be able to watch a movie and be like, oh, but this this is a plot hole here because this could have happened. I'm not that way. I'll go to reviews, essays, whatever it may be, to understand was this was this well written. I know the plot. I know everything that happened, but I'm not good at tying those pieces together. And something that I think we will try to do here in some podcasts is just try to understand what some of the plot holes are in some movies. Mm-hmm. Now we have obviously done a podcast of some of Christo- Christopher Nolan's movies, which are very well written, everything kind of just goes together really well, right? I do think we need to do some podcasts of intentionally bad movies, stuff with plot holes, stuff that gives us reason to appreciate the really good movies. Yeah. There's a difference between uh, a bad movie, a good movie, and a good bad movie, and sometimes that's hard. It's exactly... But, but just to, to your point about, you know, uh, Christopher Nolan movies and what you've been talking about, I think it's uh, a movie and just art in general is it can maybe this isn't a total uh, a total amount of like how I'm worthy it is i'm really sorry i'm really yeah. hot in here yeah but to go back to your point you know about christopher nolan and uh <laughs> josh just took off his shirt <laughs> close your eyes guys <laughs> <laughs> we'll just put, wait we'll... for the final act <laughs> We'll blur his nipples for you guys. Don't worry. I mean, I've always wanted to see your feet. <laughs> You're going to need a lot more than that. The dogs are coming out. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> if okay. you heard some sort of scratch, that was my socks just rubbing up, up against your ear. <laughs> Moist. <laughs> mm. But to go back to your point about Christopher Nolan films, I think a sign of a really good piece of art, not just movies in general, but in this example, movies, is if you can look at it, enjoy it in the moment, but then walk away from it and think, man, that was really good. I would like to watch that, review that, listen to that, think about that again, and enjoy it again. I mean, I mean we've, we've done a, a, an episode about The Prestige, and, you know, having watched that, I can say, yeah, I, I could totally rewatch that and get enjoyment from that again and but it's different now if i were to like watch uh the new star wars movies and go all i'm going to be thinking about when i'm watching that is oh that doesn't make sense oh that's out of character or oh oh, why does that work or how is palpatine back or and 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 things like that that's going to be in my mind instead of wow this is so cool or wow that person from the original uh trilogy is back whoa i'm not going to be thinking that anymore it's kind of i'm I can't re-enjoy it uh, in the same way that I did when I first went in to watch it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And to tie it into a life lesson like we tried to do earlier, but I'm going to try and bring it back. But we go into some things in life, we love it at first. We just don't want it to end, and then once it's, once it's done, we realize just how pitiful it actually was. Mm-hmm. Sin, for example. <laughs> what? No Big way. Big generic concept, but no. We love stuff at first, regardless of how bad it is, mm-hmm. and 
we get so comfortable with living in it, we don't understand how bad it actually is until we take a step back. Now, what do we take a step back in? We step, take a step back and look at whatever we've been doing through the lens of the Bible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or now, another Christian who has a better Christian. perspective. Yeah. It, now, it's critical discernment. I think the hardest part is just being able to either take advice from someone, you know, a friend, your brother, your dad, yeah. someone yeah. like that who's like, what you're, I, I'm calling you out on this, being able to listen to that or just being mm-hmm. able to yourself step back and say, hold on, let me think about this. Yeah, and, and just it, exactly how we kind of just tied this in with taking a step back and for me not being able to understand why something was bad by my own disturbance. I'm going to need to go to other people for that help in knowing why was this actually bad? Because this doesn't doesn't really make sense. To me, it doesn't seem bad. I don't have anything to compare it to. I don't have the tools that I necessarily need to understand this situation. Now, maybe for some situations, I would be able to just immediately understand this is bad. For me, I know drugs are bad. For some other people, they they may be taking, having a hard time taking a step back and not understanding that it's bad. They're in it. So they they don't have the same lens that I do. Now for some other scenarios, bad songs, that that is that is a very big one. I have a hard time understanding why some of the songs or some of the movies or even some of the video games that I enjoy are so bad because I step away from it and I feel like I'm the same person as I was before, but am I really? Now tying that in with other topics whether it be drugs, sex, or whatever it may be, we have such a hard time understanding why stuff is bad from our own perspective. Because we ourselves like to justify why what we're doing is right. It's natural human just instinct. We are always right, but we don't understand what's going wrong until we take a step back and see what other people are seeing. Whether that be friends like I have right here, or just what God has to say about it in the Bible. There's either... The situation where you are wrong and you don't know it's wrong and others will tell you that. Or you are temporarily blinded, you know it's wrong, and when you take a step back you realize it's wrong. Then confirmed by others around you. Either way, having the humility to understand that what you're doing is not right and to listen to others is so valuable and such a big life lesson to learn and we're still young we are still learning that really well but i think it's important to learn how to listen to others and accept input into your life what do you guys think about the mario movie oh i'm i'm kind of stoked i am kind of excited (laughs) this is this is another example of one of those good bad movies that i think is possible you know really good Mm -hmm. bad uh for example movies that did so well on being bad minions good bad Good movies. Great example. Became a meme. Was so stupid, you loved watching it. Hmm. Another example. If you have not seen it, Master of Disguise. Stupidest movie ever. It's it's literally just... It's fart jokes. It's pee-pee-poo-poo jokes. But I love watching it every single time. Another example. Elf. Elf is another really good movie that just does so good at being bad. You well... Know? I think Elf is a different type. I th- I think it's. I, I would agree. I okay, would agree. I've actually I actually have a little bit of a uh, <laughs> philosophical experience because <laughs> I've taken a philosophy class. Philosophy class. Philosophy class. When uh, we've actually read a book about why it's okay to enjoy the bad movies, and uh, there's been discussion about this, and there's different um, ideas that philosophers have put forward as to why you should be able to, or why you can or can't enjoy bad movies. But in this book specifically, basically the thesis is essentially that a, a, a film has a certain type of intention, okay? Bad, good, bad uh, movies, at least uh, unintentionally, are not made to be um, admired for being bad, okay? You don't go to watch a movie like uh, Battlefield Earth, for example, and you think... Because the uh, director, you, it's a bit of a lesser known one. I actually have watched it, but it's... Uh, Wow. It's an ex- it's an example of a movie where the director and the crew were trying to create a film that was good, but they failed. Okay, and they failed in their intentions. But that kind of that that failure is kind of um, makes it enjoyable in and of itself. Okay, that has some sort of admirable quality about it. So there's a difference between um, 
levels of good and bad in movies. There are movies that have that are intentionally designed to be kind of silly and comical and bad in a certain re- retrospect. I think those are called campy. Okay, there's certain type of campy movies, but then there are movies that are not <laughs> designed to be campy and they're designed to be good films, but they fail at that. I think one of the best examples is Troll Two. You guys haven't watched it? You're probably not missing out. But it is uh, very strange and hilarious because that film was just so wacky and crazy and people enjoy it because of its badness because of its failed intentions and that's uh that's kind of what is just so fascinating about good bad movies is we enjoy them because they failed at their intentions but we also enjoy movies that succeed at their intentions as well you know endgame for example or lord of the rings or pretty much just any normal movie yeah, when I talked about in episode zero that there is a spectrum of movies, there are good movies, there are good movies that are, have bad elements, there are bad movies that have good elements, and there are bad movies. I was, there's kind of, I was talking about the two different versions of bad. There are bad as in sinful evil bad, like the ones that we just shouldn't watch. Like, I don't think any Christian should be watching supernatural horror because that is peeking into the demonic world and it's... That's the type of bad that's evil bad. Then there's bad like Birdemic. That man who directed Birdemic set out to make a good movie, failed miserably, and is now known for one of, as one of the worst movies in cinema history. That's just because it was poorly made. And I, I understand what you're saying. There are movies that we go to watch. Like, I would only watch Birdemic to see how bad it is. And yet, it's fun to see the failure even though... He is, even though that movie flopped, it's still enough to want to watch it for the sake of it being bad. Opposite for the reason of something uh, supernaturally horror, which is, I don't want to watch it because it's bad. There's different meanings of bad that I define it as, if that makes sense. It's also the idea, like, the difference between, like, a a bad thing versus an an immoral thing. It's... uh slightly related to the perspective a film takes if a film you know portrays something immoral happening like the drug crime uh, or the the drug trade but it doesn't take a good perspective on it i mean that's different things as if it was to say drugs are great everyone should be high and do things (laughs) stupid all the time that's a good thing and and that's kind of what's related to you're talking to but there's also like bad in the sense of you know like Ooh, that's a that's a really cringy line because that actor is not good and he makes no facial expressions or you know it's like a lot of things on the internet which are like young teenagers just trying to do stuff and it's like ooh yeah you're not you're not good at it I'm sorry but at the same time there's also some sort of morbid fascination with watching teenagers try to do things and fail because that's somehow entertaining that's a lot of mm-hmm. what comedy is watching you know people do stuff stupid stuff and just fail at it because yeah. It's not going to work. I think for good and bad movies, uh, the bad in which it's just not well made, not the bad in the sense that it's just not something we should be watching because it is not beneficial for your soul sort of scenario. The bad in which it's just not well made, there's a bit of a function with it. It starts off really good. If it's well made, it's good, and then it starts to drop off. And then once you get so bad, it's good again, sort of thing. Mm-hmm. I think that's just very interesting. Like the Uncanny Valley you were talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think like what you're kind of pointing to is I've watched this video about uh, Riverdale and how that's kind of an example of that, where Riverdale starts off as like a typical, you know, teenage style uh, high school drama stuff. And everyone's like, yeah, okay, we, it's it's fine, it's okay, it's good at that intention, but it kind of just gets worse at that, at being what it intended to be. And then, so it gets, it gets lower in the, in the valley. But then it gets so bad and so crazy and bizarre, and just like suddenly aliens and supernatural monsters and zombies, and, and then suddenly, because it's so weird and wacky and bad in that respect... It's almost good. Yeah, it becomes good. It becomes enjoyable again. So where would you say that something like... Mario movie or Despicable Me or something along those lines where you it the, you didn't say they were poorly made because they are well made and they're meant to be good movies but they've almost adopted the sense that they are stupid movies yeah. to be completely random and idiotic and yet we love them 
for being bad. Is that a third definition of a bad movie that we can loop into this discussion? I think I think scenarios specifically for Despicable Me. I'm not talking about the new Super Mario movie. I think that one hard to say until it comes out. Yeah. But Despicable Me, that one you also have to look at as intended audience. Yeah. It was <laughs> it was for kids. Yeah. It is mainly enjoyed by middle aged people. Yeah. So, again, like Minions, that one it became a meme because everybody knew how bad the Despicable Me ones were. You also grew up with Despicable Me, and now you're an, a, yeah. an adult who when understands a, yeah. uh, Minions at, to be a joke. Yeah, when I was a kid, Despicable <laughs> Me was great. Grew up to understand how bad it actually was. But then the new Minions movie coming out, going to see that with friends, almost brought me back to when Despicable Me was good while I was watching it. As far as intentionally bad movies, I don't think they exist. I don't think intentionally bad to where they're good exists now feel free to prove me wrong but i think any good bad movie was never intentional i would have to disagree well you want to know why i disagree why sharknado that okay okay (laughs) well that's a good example i I have not seen any of them there are Six? Six. Six, six a, Sharknadoes. Wow. I, oh, let me tell you. I know at, by the end, they were not taking themselves seriously for a second. The the way... Again, this is all third person because I haven't watched them, but we from what I've heard, them. we should watch we them. We should watch them. What I've heard is that they understood how much of a joke it was, and so they... Embraced took, it. Didn't, they embraced it. They didn't take themselves seriously anymore. So that's where I disagree with you that a movie cannot be purposefully bad because I believe they were purposely making them bad. Not that they were bad quality. I'm sure that they... I, well, this would, we haven't seen it, so it's hard to say. But the concept of yeah. a they know Sharknado a coming six times to, <laughs> for all the sequels is ridiculous, and yet people are drawn to it mostly because of the fan base, but also because it is stupid. And I think that's just yeah. attractive. Well, and that that relates to intentions, intentions and stuff. And so it's who is this movie for? And you know, you can still get enjoyment for a movie even if it's not intended for you. Well, but that's like a lot of people, like especially nowadays with the internet, we look back at like childhood TV shows and we laugh at them. Even and we even have even more time enjoying it because we know that in our in our current state as like, you know, younger adults or whatever, it doesn't make any sense because, you know, it's not supposed to make sense for us. It's supposed to make sense for kids. So yeah, there it's, this is a very interesting topic that I feel like we can dive into a lot more, but I think for the suit for the new Mario movie. Now I didn't really ever play the games. I was never super into Mario. You also never really grew up with games. Did you? No, no that's, that's true. <laughs> It's um, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> but I me. just looking at the trailer. I don't think they're going for a super stupid movie, and or a super uh, so bad it's good movie. At least I can't say too much. I'd it. What I'd like from that movie is just a good story and a good reflection of the world that Mario is based off. So maybe it'll be good. I don't know. I think personally, they're going for a memeish type thing maybe they hired jack black to play bowser exactly you don't go uh, go and do something like that without trying to make it meme-ish because jack black is a meme (laughs) he's the embodiment of a meme yep uh i think they're going for similar to a shrek type thing because shrek Mm. a whole nother topic but like (laughs) shrek is just crazy and that's why it's so good yeah Yep. But Shrek is... I've also watched Shrek recently for the first time, and it's actually oh, a wait, good story. wait, hold up, hold up. How far behind are you? Uh, I have... You recently watched Shrek for the first time? Okay, you edit this out, but... Um... <laughs> edit this out. No, we're keeping this in. <laughs> Fess want, up to how Do you want to know, know the truth? I've never watched the Shrek series until I went to college recently, and <laughs> I made friends there, and then they said, you've never watched Shrek? So we've watched Shrek 1. I just watched Shrek 2 like a week ago, and we're going to like work our way through. Because I haven't watched, seen it. You are in for something. Yeah, but like Not a e- treat, I would say. Well, I'd say that they're they're good, fine films. I mean, they have a they good story. Good. And they're funny, but, but fun. 
they're, they're funny and stuff like that. But they're intentionally designed to be funny. And, but they're not designed to be meme-ish because that didn't exist back then. I think they fall prey to not knowing when to stop. Yeah. Fast and is, Furious. Ice that's Age. Everything. Ice Fast Age. Fast and Furious. Despicable Me. Should have just not started. <laughs> There's so many movies that fall prey to where they should have just stopped while they were behind. Power Rangers. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's some pet peeve because there's so many TV shows. There is a lot and lot of remakes, a lot of just continued sequels that will never stop. Looping back around to what we were talking about uh, at the beginning, just the different sequels that are not asked of and aren't worth it, like Hocus Pocus 2, like Disenchanted, they may be fun to watch, but they're not worth it. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode of The Roundtable. We had a lot of fun talking about just some random stuff today. Let me know if you like this roundtable discussion. I mean, we have fun as friends just talking about movies and stuff. I would love to share it with you. So let us know if you like listening to that kind of stuff. Remember to follow us on Spotify and share this with your friends. Join our Discord server. Follow us on Instagram and just uh, help us grow our community. And if you guys have any topics that you really liked in this roundtable discussion, uh, let us know. And we'd love to elaborate on some of them if you just enjoyed listening about something specific or if you have ideas for us to talk about or just ramble on about something let us know please yeah we love to hear your thoughts you know we had a really really fun time just you know talking about this impromptu amongst ourselves but if there's anything else piques your interest piques our interest maybe uh we'll talk about it more and we appreciate you we love you guys peace Mm -hmm.